audible clearly? So let us start the lecture. Last time I, yesterday I mean, I revised multiculturalism for post-colonialism, science fiction, psychological novel, post-World War novel, literature and feminism. Now we can think of feminism even and eco-criticism. Okay. So let me go back to If so the second unit which I will be revising today. Where we are talking about literary critical theories. Okay. Now let us understand what are the critical theories we have already done, feminism, then eco-criticism, and Marxism. Okay, we've already done these three. Let us have a recap of what we have done already. If you, I mean, if you remember when I taught you Marxism and feminism as well as eco-criticism, all these are connected actually. Eco-criticism also talks about eco-feminism, okay? Similarly, Marxism talks about class struggle which can be between men and women. So, when we talk about struggle between man and a woman, we also refer to feminism. So there is a branch of Marxism, which is known as Marxist feminism. Okay. So all three are connected this way. Okay. Let me show you. A PPT on women and literature that will help you to understand feminism. Can you see the screen? 
it's clearly visible to you yeah. okay so if you see can you identify these writers any of these writers who are there in the image ma'am the first one is arundhati roy yes good what about others who is the second one third one fourth one fifth one sixth one any you can identify it shows that you are not interested in knowing the people whom you read or the books prescribed by whom you read second mm -hmm. is yes fourth is anita desai who is third third is not anita desai sorry not third ma'am fourth one yes fourth one is anita desai okay it is aparna who told me this correct yes ma'am both na arundhati roy also you only told me correct yes ma'am hmm. second one is kiran desai anita desai's daughter who is also a writer third one is jhumpa lehri and fourth one you have identified anita desai fifth one is yunis de suja who is the sixth one you browse it she is british writer okay manage writers and critics now i read one text by shashi desh pande which is titled as the binding wine novel by shashi desh pande where um, a male poet tells to a budding women poet why do you need to write poetry it's enough for a young woman like you to give birth to children that's your poetry leave the other poetry to us men see a poet is considered educated personality okay male mentality whether you are educated or uneducated has been changed okay so women are not getting their due because of that patriarchal mindset okay women were not shown as women were women have this assumption that women were not shown by the male writers as women were the chief characters were also the men this i have already discussed so women have been excluded from literary history actually abused and harassed by the male writers due to patriarchal mindset because the literature written was entirely by men for men to these means the female roles are marginal even criteria for analyzing literary text have been thoroughly gender based women writers refused to accept the images of women as portrayed by male writers carlo price said that women haven't experienced their own experience masculinity and femininity are social constructs this gender discrimination is reflected in the usage of language system particularly in english pronoun is largely male oriented men is a social animal everyone must bring his identity card now where is woman man is a social animal <coughs> when we are saying everyone must bring his identity card it means everyone includes men as well as women but pronoun is used as his which is male oriented okay so this way gender discrimination can be seen 
in the usage of language women struggle as writers and critics mary wollstone crafts a vindication on the rights of women showed them way to publish their works and engage in the overall critical discourse regarding women's issues okay so mary wollstone crafts vindication on the rights of women talks about women's issues and it this text also showed them that how can they get their work published virginia woolf's a room of one's own is a driving force behind this movement simon du bois the second sex catherine m rogers the troublesome helpmate mary elmans thinking about women and cat millet sexual politics these are the texts which are considered milestones in the field of feminism Simon de Beauvoir asserts that one is not born but becomes a woman as women are taught to cooperate in their own subordination during socialization process Helene Showalter in a literature of their own shows how women's literature has evolved okay there are three phases of feminist movement the feminine they started writing under false male names the feminists from 1880 till the winning of the vote in 1920 and then the female from 1920 till the present day <coughs> including a new stage of self awareness about 1960 women in large numbers the producer consumer of the multiple voices after feminist movement started in 1960 now i told you shake kumar's indian woman talks about women's deplorable position in indian society women are not allowed to express themselves okay there was a time when women were not allowed to look themselves into the mirror okay so shivki kumar's indian women talks about those women only who were not allowed to look themselves into the mirror so the when they go to village well to bring water they they, they say themselves in the water of the village well okay the images of indian women conveyed appear more like a photograph than a portrait i realize that i write because i have to it's within me it's one point of view a world from within the women my contribution to indian writing it applies to women's writing in totality this is what shashi deshpande has told about her style of writing not only shashi deshpande tells that i realize that i write <coughs> <coughs> many women writers including anita desai namita gokhale have expressed same thing these women though they are writing about women's issues but they are writing from humanist point of view the depiction of women has changed even male in male created texts and because of that um, there are many men who used to write about women in good spirit earlier as well women are writing openly on all issues and prove that it is beneficial not only for women but also for the literary tradition as a whole <coughs> now women are not writing on domestic issues they are writing on on almost all aspects of life okay women show women as chief and heroic characters in the literature produced the by them all these years men have been telling the world in their writings that men are mysterious women are fascinating women are strange women are whimsical now women are irrational so now women are also talking and telling the world that men are mysterious this is what women writers have expressed through their poems or novels or drama gauri deshpande in her poem the female of the species says that every man also need a woman when a man is suffering some, from some problem when man is facing problem for emotional support the man goes to woman it can be mother it can be sister it can be wife it can be girlfriend it can be childhood friend okay shashi desh pande is the binding mine is a story of women characters where one the protagonist urmi suffers of trauma because of the death of her daughter then uh in the novel we also come to know the rape of a girl <coughs> kalpana rape is done by her own uncle 
means her mother's sister's husband okay because the mother's sister younger sister is childless so even the mother tells that you get married to your uncle prabhakar but that girl retaliates she doesn't want to get married but the the uncle physically abuses that girl anita decides all the novels are about man woman relationship jean rees short story illusion it's a wonderful story if you get time to read whenever please read <coughs> <coughs> this story is about a woman who keeps fashionable dresses in her wardrobe but she never gets time to wear those fashionable dresses she looks at them and fulfill her wishes that how she will look like in those dresses because of the patriarchal mindset angela carter in her short story werewolf tells the story of a granddaughter and grandmother her granddaughter visits grandmother on the way to jungle she meets a wolf okay the granddaughter's mother had given her some edibles prepared some recipes which she was told to take for her grandmother okay on the way she meets a wolf okay the girl was told how to defend herself when she will meet the beast of prey and all so she cuts the paw of the wolf when she goes to her grandmother's house she realizes when she removes the sheet from her grandmother's body she realizes that the grandmother's hand has turned into the wolf's paw she feels that the grandmother has been possessed okay <clears throat> and with the help of neighbors she beats her grandmother because she feels she is possessed by the <coughs> evil soul and the grandmother dies and the granddaughter starts living there manjula padnapan's harvest already you know the story lot has been done so feminist literary criticism gives an opportunity to look at women in literature from women's point of view it's concerned with women as the producer of textual meanings in relation to the history themes genre and structures of literature by women the second wave of feminism in the 70s and 80s sparked a resurgence in forging a place for the works of women offering courses in women's history and literature and texts by women writers were also prescribed in the syllabi not only that now women's studies okay gender studies subjects are introduced in various universities as a particular paper okay and earlier there was used to be a lot of gender discrimination in prescribing the texts by women writers but because nowadays women themselves are there in bos board of studies as teachers so women writers texts are also being prescribed in the syllabi young male and female writers depicted new women in their works who have chosen the road less traveled broken the glass and marble ceilings <clears throat> it's not that only female writers are writing about female and the new women young male writers are also writing about new women okay writers like anita nayar and jayashree mishra share women's struggle as writers too in 21st century also women writers are struggling nayar feels nothing has changed in the terms of mentality okay anita nayar says that if we talk about mentality mindset the mindset hasn't changed okay why she is saying this because it's happening as i told you that if i share with you my experience it as a woman i also feel the same that the mindset hasn't changed jayashree mishra opines women writers still feel pressurized in the world of literature and there are readers and publishers who put women <coughs> sorry <coughs> who put 
put women writers and women centric stories on the back burner and even women writers are suggested to use male pseudonym in today's publishing world and literature is a mirror to society it reflects how women have been discriminated on various grounds since centuries due to patriarchy changing scenario women are there in every field in their journey from expression to entrepreneurship despite challenges okay now women are not there as the writer or teacher or nurse women are there as business women and well okay if you read ma shweta devi's rudali rudali is a story of a woman who suffers a lot when she gets married her mother in law doesn't allow her to express herself okay <clears throat> her name is shani chari because she was born on saturday and she is considered unlucky by not only the family members but by the society okay and she loses her husband at a young age she loses her mother in law she loses her son also at a young age she doesn't get time to cry but later on she cries for rich people and that's why the novel has been titled rudali <coughs> now to survive for survival of her child her son her daughter in law a grandson she has to adopt this profession of rudali she, later on she becomes a union leader of rudali okay so this text shows how a woman who was not allowed to express herself in the beginning became an entrepreneur at the end okay for women writers writing is an inner compulsion and as instinctive as breathing because women were not allowed to express themselves since so many centuries so writing is an expression and as natural as breathing they write because they are writers and they must write that's all they will continue to write despite pressures and discriminative mental model so this is regarding feminism i have referred to these text okay i hope this recap help you to understand feminism those who haven't attended the lecture earlier or even if you have attended the lecture it improved your understanding of feminism correct <coughs> did you like it next i would like to give you a little about <coughs> eco criticism okay so let me open the another ppt it will help you to understand eco criticism
I hope it will be visible. Can you see? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Now, <clears throat> as I told you already, a lot has been explained about eco criticism. Eco criticism is a literary approach which tells you relationship between literature and environment. Okay, environment concern is now firmly embedded in public life, in education, medicine, and law, in journalism, literature, and art. People blame the, their environment. There is only one person to blame and only one themselves. So we say government is not doing this. Okay, or as public, we blame government. Government blame public that people don't listen and don't follow the rules and regulations and law. But we all are responsible, okay? We must return to nature and nature is God. So these are important things which you need to keep in mind while we are talking about eco-criticism. Environment is at the center of human life. Okay, because without environment, good environment, we can't survive. Human activities are also at the center of environmental sustainability. Literature and culture can't be divorced from environmental concerns as usual. Indian literature and culture consider nature as an indispensable aspect of human existence. Our scriptures tell us that divinity prevails in every element of nature. Nature can't be controlled, rather it is to be involved for cooperation. Which I have already explained a lot when I taught you all these things. Now, what are the causes because of which environment is destroyed? Increasing population, overconsumption of the natural resources, extension of many plants and animals. Okay. <clears throat> Toxic substances are used for production. When we talk about agriculture, we see that farmers now do they use pesticides, okay, various types of chemicals for production. So this has you also created environmental loss. It has redu reduced the regenerative capacity of nature. Okay, we can see more concretes in our surrounding as deforestation is happening. So less trees are there. The positivity and happiness is missing. It has resulted in varied pollution, global warming, drought, unseasonal rain, flood, foggy atmosphere, tsunami, storms, etc. Now environmental criticism. <coughs> Or eco criticism is also post 1960s, 70s approach. Because of environmental concern in the 1960s and 70s, eco criticism as a literary approach emerged. Raymond Williams, The Country and the City, 1973. Joseph Nickers, The Comedy of Survival, 1974, are the texts which are prominent texts. William Rickert was the first one to coin the term eco-criticism in 1978. Eco-criticism was initiated by many environmental thinkers and writers, critics, Cheryl Grotfelty, Harold Fromm, and Lawrence Buell in the mid 1990s. Rickert William Sage, Application of ecology and ecological concepts to the study of literature is known as ecocriticism. Cheryl Glotfelty says the ecocriticism is the study of relationship between literature and physical environment. Lawrence Biel says that a study conducted in a spirit of commitment to environmentalist practices. Now, it's not only British writers like Wordsworth, Thomas Hardy, or D.H. Lawrence have talked about environment, nature in their literary texts. Even Indian writers have talked a lot. Indian English literature is also full of concern for environment. Wordsworth, other romanticists have worshipped nature, we all know, and they have made a call, return to nature. 
Thomas Hardy in his regional novels talks about nature a lot. Hardy extraordinarily fond of animals. Okay. So when we talk about nature, we are not only talking about trees, we are talking all elements of nature, creatures even, okay? Flora, flora and fauna, okay? So flowers, plants, okay? Forest, the animals in the forest, water resources, animals, water animals, etc. The foliage and fruit of forest and orchard occupy the center of hard age world. I sit under a tree and feel alone. I think of certain insects around me, <coughs> magnified by the microscope. Creatures like elephants, flying dragons, etc. And I feel by no means alone. The microscopic examination of vegetable and insect dominates in the novels, great mansions, Sons and lovers, rainbow. Environmental concerns in Indian English literature is reflected by many writers, poets, but I've chosen Dilip Chitre and <coughs> Giv Patel. Okay. Now Dilip Chitre has written a poem, Failing of the Banyan Tree. Uh, if you have read it in SYBM, See, trees are sacred, failing them is a crime. But my father cut down all the trees except the banyan. To cut the banyan tree, he had to employ 50 men with axes for seven days. So the banyan tree was so deep rooted, okay? Whose roots lay deeper than all our lives. The banyan tree was three times as tall as our house. Its trunk had a circumference of 50 feet. Its straggy aerial roots fell to the ground from 30 feet or more. So first they cut the branches, sawing them off for seven days and the heat was huge. Insects and birds began to leave the tree. And then they came to its massive trunk. The street tree tells how much efforts are made to cut down the tree. Okay. <coughs> Now, Giv Patel has written a poem on killing a tree, where he also talks about the same thing like Dilip Chitre, that to cut down a tree, to kill a tree, how much efforts are made, okay? It takes much time to kill a tree, not a simple jab of the knife will do it. So, heck and chop, but this alone won't do it. Not so much pain will do it. No, the root is to be pulled out out of the anchoring earth. It is to be roped, tied and pulled out, snapped out or pulled out entirely out from the earth cave and the strength of the tree exposed. He said, if you cut down tree, okay, then it's not killed completely. You have to pull it out from the root and then you have to uh, put it in the sunlight, okay? <coughs> Then the tree is scorched and chopped in the sun and the air leading to the browning, hardening, twisting, withering, and then it is done. So, so much efforts are made to cut down and kill a tree. If you can make so much efforts to cut down a tree or murder a tree, okay, why can't you or me make an effort to plant a tree? Okay. So, both these poets advise the naughty children to channelize energy in forestation, not in deforestation. Simon Estick in 2001 also said the same thing. The government of India's cleanliness drive Swachh Bharat mission awareness campaign regarding don't defecate in open are also indirectly talking about environmental concern. Okay, Digital India and e-waste BMC waste segregation policy when where BMC says that keep the dry waste and the wet waste in different means. All these are actually talking about keeping the environment good, okay, healthy for human beings and for other creatures, nature as well. But the blame game is happening. The public blames the government, the government blames the public, okay. 
Besides, reducing human population is equally important for environmental sustainability. We need to make optimum utilization of natural resources. I mean, we need not waste water, electricity, air, whatever. We should not waste paper even because for papers also trees are cut, water is used. Follow the three R's at least reduce, reuse and recycle. Simple living to reduce exploitation of nature. One industry waste can be used as raw material for another industry that can be reused and reduce even recycle as much as is possible. <clears throat> Under corporate social responsibility, industries are also supposed to follow these three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle. Then only we can protect the environment and make it worth living for our next generation. So these are the references I have used for making this PPT. I hope it's clear, pretty clear. Hello. No responses from your side. Then Mahesh Dattani has written two radio plays where he talks about environment, how during famine and earthquake people take care of each other. Okay. <clears throat> now famine and earthquake are result of our neglect of environment only. Is it clear? So we should keep all these things also in mind. Now, when we talk about Marxism, I would like to share with you Marxism is all about class struggle, as I have already told you. So let me share with you the texts which talk about Marxist struggle. Especially Marxist struggle can be seen even father returning home. Okay. Now, father returning home is about a father's journey, okay, through local train who comes to home late in the evening because and his chappals are soiled, his bag loaded with books. It's about the workforce who suffers a lot. He drinks weak tea, eats a stale chapati, reads a book. During sleep, he dreams of his ancestors as well as grandchildren and think of nomads. Now he children's neglect him and they often don't share their joys, sorrow, jokes and secrets with him. He trembles at this. Now if you see, this is happening in metropolitan cities only is not correct. It's happening nowadays in villages even. Okay. So, family is the only institution where you resort to in difficult times of your life, but that family is only neglecting you because of the struggle, power struggle. Okay. If you see Nisim Ajkils, the Patriot, very Indian poem in Indian English, it also talks about non violence in life, individual's life, leader's life non-violence in country at global level, <coughs> national and global level. So why? Because we don't follow Indian wisdom, which is 100% correct, or you can say 200% correct. Okay, but 
we also need to re uh, respect women he says but when he reads a new paper he reads the new jagwan gunda has thrown stone at indra gandhi he is referring to the former prime minister indra gandhi who had been attacked and her nose got wounded and then she has to undergo plastic surgery okay so that is what how we only disrespect our own women when a woman prime minister can be attacked by a young student the student may be frustrated no doubt but then it's not the correct way to express yourself <coughs> <coughs> then he talks that our own product lassi is better than wine <clears throat> and it's a good drink for digestion if little salt is added into it now when we talk about marxism we talk about class struggle we talk about powerful and powerless country even the struggle continues between powerful and powerless country as well you can see so many things are happening in harvest also manjula padmanaban talks about first world country and third world country okay so then ejikil turns to the concept of world peace again he says what do you think of the possibility of world peace when pakistan and china the neighboring countries of india are not behaving the way they should behave and is behaving in a different way and then he says i tolerate you you tolerate me okay so tolerance is important in life to avoid class struggle but it doesn't mean that we should tolerate injustice if you follow indian culture which is absolutely correct each individual and we as a nation will also able to contribute to sustainable development goals because sustainable development goals talks about planet prosperity people peace four things mainly pj <clears throat> tendulkar silence the court is in session and kamla can also be seen from feminist point of view marxist point of view okay because patriarchal society places women in a disadvantaged position so men and women struggle continued then men are considered powerful and women are considered powerless okay leela banarej is school teacher in silence the court is in session she is accused of crime of infanticide under section 302 of the indian penal code during the course of the mock play her private life is publicly exposed but professor damle who is actually guilty in this situation is not held an accused at all and left scot free banare reveals how she has been violated physically twice and she accuses all men as hypocrites in kamla jaising jadav a journalist commits a crime intentionally he buys a woman kamla from a market okay women trafficking human trafficking is a crime but to prej to prove that buying and selling of human beings and women is happening in india as a journalist he commits the crime and presents her in a press conference in the worn out sari only for popularity promotion and legal proof now when his wife sarita comes to know that she has been presented in a press conference in a worn out sari she opposes okay she also opposes his view of keeping kamla in a woman's home or an orphanage but because he wants to save himself from being arrested he does that when sarita rebel saying that after all she is a woman and men and women are equal so a woman should be given the right to live her life like the man with dignity not only her husband jaising jado but her uncle kaka sahib who was also a journalist says that's not manhood <clears throat> okay i have referred to gauri deshpande is the female of the species where she mentions that a female is needed when one faces an emotional trauma okay so man 
also needs a woman. Okay. Human society must respect nature and its cycle to nurture and sustain the human kind. Every human being needs to respect the other, is respective gender to live a healthy life at any linear societal front. We should also follow our ancient Indian culture in the backdrop of development, digitalization, and globalization for a whole for a healthy society in the post-COVID-19 era to maintain environmental balance and to achieve sustainable development goals. Okay. <coughs> so this was regarding Marxist criticism as well I discussed. Now, next lecture onwards, I will do the next approach. Okay. So this was a recap. I end the lecture now.